Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be fixing a really annoying issue with Fastor, and that is not being able to upload CSV files to Fastor. And this can be especially painful if you already have an existing database, probably in MongoDB or Postgres, and you love to migrate your data away from those databases into Fastor. It's really annoying Google has not fixed this yet, but this is where AppSmith comes in, because with AppSmith, we can build custom tools like this to solve whatever issues we have. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to build a custom tool to help you upload CSV files to Firestore in less than five minutes. My name is Confidence and I'm a developer advocate at AppSmith. Let's get started. All right, so right here I have a blank application created on AppSmith, but we need to start by connecting our Firestore instance to AppSmith. So I'm just going to head over to the Firebase console and have a bunch of projects right here. I'm going to be using my test project. And what we want to do here is go to the Firestore database. So this is the database I am going to be using to set up this whole application. So to connect this application to AppSmith, what you need to do is go to your project settings, and you want to go to service accounts. And here you want to have the admin SDK set to Node.js and generate a new private key. So once this is generated, you are pretty much good to go. What you need to do is head back to AppSmith and try to use that connection to talk to your Firebase instance. So I'm going to go to data sources and here we have an integration for Firestore. So I'm just going to have this selected. All right, and I'm just going to call this Firestore all right, so for the database URL, you already have a template here. So it's going to be your project ID.firebase.com, firebase.io.com. And right here, you can see my project ID is my test project and this um, random ID added to the end. So I'm just going to quickly grab that and let's uh, fill that in as our database URL. So I have my database URL right there. And the last thing I also need to grab is my project ID, which is just also going to be coming from the URL. So it's my test project and the random ID attached to it from the URL right here. So I have that looking good. The next thing we need to do is supply the service account credentials. And this is where the downloaded JSON file comes in. So I'm going to go ahead to open this up and let us copy this over. So I'm just going to copy this over. All right, and I can paste this right here. And what I want to do is test this connection. It's valid and we can go ahead to save this. So we have a connection to Firestore created and we can come back to it to set it up such that we're able to upload data to Firestore. So let's uh, head back to the UI and let's build the UI for the application right now. So when it comes to building the UI, we need a couple of widgets. First, we need a widget that is going to allow us to select a CSV file. So let's grab a file picker widget. All right, I'm just going to place this right here on the canvas. And we also want to grab a table widget, which is going to allow us to uh, display a preview of the data we have selected from the file picker widget. So I'm just going to place this right here. All right, let's expand this a bit. All right, so this looks nice. And we have the file picker widget and we also have a table widget. So for the file picker widget, I need to configure this a bit. That's because we want to have a CSV file selected. So what I'm going to do is set the data format to CSV or array slash CSV only. And what this is going to do is that whenever a CSV file is selected, it's going to automatically convert that CSV file to JSON. So I'm just going to show this to you right now. Let's go select a CSV file. And I'm just going to select the CSV file right here. I have that CSV file selected and it's been converted to JSON, but we don't have a way to preview it. That's where the table widget comes in. So I'm going to select the table widget. And what I'm going to do here is set the table data to be a binding that reads data from the file selected on the file picker widget. So let's go do this. So this is going to be file picker1.files. And since we just have one file, this will be in index zero and we want to read the data. And you can see we have all of that file information displayed right here. We have 200 records and I can page through these records to see a preview of that data that will be uploaded to Firestore. So this is looking nice. The next thing we want to do is go write a query to actually start the upload process. 
All right, so let's write a query to actually upload this CSV data to Fastor. So let's head back to our data sources tab. And if we go back to the active tab, you see we have a Fastor connection. So let's go write a query. And I'm going to call this query the upload row query. All right, so we have this query created. You have this set document command. And what this does is that it creates a document if it doesn't exist, but if it exists, it updates that document, giving the document ID. Then you also have the create document command. This is going to create a document giving an ID, but if that document ID already exists, it's going to fail. And lastly, you have the add to documents, uh, add documents to collection command. And what this does is that it auto generates the ID for you. So you don't have to worry about conflicts where a document with a particular ID already exists. So since we are uploading a CSV file that actually has a bunch of IDs already, we're going to be using the set document command. This is because we want to tell it what ID to use. So here for the collection, we're going to be creating a new collection called users. And for the actual ID, we're going to be passing this as a parameter to this API call. So this is going to come from this.params.id. All right. And the next thing we want to do, I'm just going to ignore the timestamp value part, is that we want to give it some data to write to Fastor. So the actual data is going to come as a parameter to this API call. So this is going to be this dot params dot row data. And uh, this looks good to go. So right now this is undefined as well as the ID. This is also undefined, but at runtime, these values will be passed to the update row API call, and that would have it saved in Fastor. So now that we have the upload query done, let's take a look at a JS uploader logic that would actually go in to use this query to save documents in Fastor. All right, so let's go on to write a JavaScript function that would make use of this API to write documents to Fastor. So to do that, I'm going to be creating a JavaScript file. I'm just going to hit on the plus button here. And what we want is a new JavaScript object. I'm going to call this um, app.js, for example. And here, we want to have a single function that is going to perform the upload. So I'm going to call this function upload, all right? And what this function is going to do is that it's going to create a bunch of upload premises and execute all of those premises, which will actually write the data to Fastor. So let's start creating the premises. So this is going to be a const upload. And for the document we want to upload, this is going to come from the file picker. So this is going to be file picker1.files index zero. And we can take a look at what we have in data. So if I do a return here, so let's do a return upload. And I go ahead to run this function. You'll notice that we have the exact data you saw on the table widget shown here in the response page. So now that we know we actually access the, accessing the data, let us create a bunch of upload promises using this data. So I can do a dot map here, all right? And for each row, what I want to do is create a promise. So I want to create a promise uh, to run the upload query. But before that, I need to figure out the document ID and the row data that will be sent as a parameter to the upload function. So I can easily use the object destructuring syntax right here. So this is going to be const uh, ID, and we want to pull the row data from the row using the object destructuring syntax. All right, so we have both the ID and the row, and now we can go to return a promise. So this is going to be return uh, upload row dot run, and we want to pass in the ID and the row data as parameter to the upload row API call. So remember, in the upload row API call, we mentioned we'll be passing the ID as a parameter and also the raw data as a parameter. This is how we get to do it using JavaScript. So we have this um, done now. And now we are going to have a bunch of promises in the uploads array. So what I want to do is run all of those promises so that we actually have this API call executed for each document in the file picker widget or each row in our CSV file. So let's do that. So this is going to be promises and we are going to do dot all 
we want to do all of the uploads so this is going to be run all of the uploads and here when this is successful so let's do a dot then we want to show a message let's do show alerts uh, upload complete and this is going to have a um, sub type of success all right but if this fails we want to do a dot catch and let us try to display the error that happened so let's do a show alert and this is going to be e dot message and here we're going to set the alert type to warning all right so this looks good and we are done with the upload function so if i go run this function right now it's actually going to have those documents uploaded to the file store but we actually don't want to be able to run the function from the javascript file we instead want to be able to run this function from the ui so let's head back to the ui and i'm going to grab a button for the upload process so i'm just going to drop this right here and let's call this upload button and then when this button is clicked on we want to go run that javascript function so this is going to be execute the javascript function it's in the app.js file and it's the upload function and this looks awesome so we can give this a spin right now i am going to run this function and we should have our documents uploaded to faster all right so we have all 200 documents uploaded to faster and you see that we have this notification saying the upload is complete now we can head over to faster so let's go to faster and we should have a new users collection as you can see right here and this collection has been created using the document id from the table so we have this id column we have all of those records created using the document id and we can go take a look at one of them and you see that we have the document id then we have the uh, row information which in this case is a user data so this looks nice i can wrap up this application by adding a text widget right here all right so let's add a text widget and i can say uh, upload csv to faster all right so let's set this to large or extra large and we have a really nice app built here so now that this is done i can deploy the app which is awesome um, i can also go on to share this app with friends um, adding their email id if i want them added to the application and then they would have access to our deployed application so we're done all right, I hope you found this video helpful and this probably also give you ideas on the kind of applications you can build on AppSmith. If you'd love to learn more, we made a video right here on how to build an admin panel with MongoDB in five minutes. And we also have a video right here on how to set up a self-hosted instance of AppSmith running on Docker free of charge in less than five minutes, of course. All right, so that's all for our video today. If you like this video, leave a like, get subscribed, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.